Hello everyone. It's Jaya here and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's time for a new release from Varada Sharma Designs. Once again Varada has knocked it out of the park with her beautiful florals. So Lily, a few of us are having our Insta hop to celebrate and there are prizes. Stay tuned for details. I chose two daisies and bleeding heart image. I arranged it using word by pairing the vase image from pretty little tulips. Then printed it onto a white cardstock. Those daisies are just so fun to color. I decided to keep this card layout really simple. Hmm. And right. Don't you know? Fresh as a daisy. I colored the flowers with two shades of yellow in the stems with two shades of blue. Just soft colors fading out to white but with enough shadows to make them still pop. With a nice dark center. How sweet is that little bunch of daisies? And they were such a dream to color. Using watercolor pencils, I colored the places I wanted to be darkest. Often using more than one color, as I shaded them a bit. Then I used a marker in the rest and blend it all to get a lovely shaded effect. I used a light blue, for the part of the bowl, that has water. For those of you who might not know, alcohol markers are high quality, that have many advantages over traditional water based markers. You can color without streaks and lines and colors blend beautifully together right on the paper. Since they are alcohol not water based, you can color in the same spot repeatedly and the paper will not ball up or tear. I printed my image on cardstock. I like to use Nina Classic Crest. If you are having a problem with your marker ink spreading or feathering outside your image lines, it might be that you are oversaturating the paper with too much ink. But often, the feathering is caused by a cardstock that has too soft of a surface. It's worth trying a different card brand of cardstock. A different cardstock will often solve the problem of the printed image smearing also. The first thing I do is decide where my light source is because it will help me decide where highlights and shadows should go. Sometimes the image shading shows where shadows should be. This image is shaded, but I'm still placing my light source in front of the image. In the upper left. This means the lower right parts of the image will generally be slightly darker and the upper left parts will be slightly highlighted. Color your darker, shaded areas with your darkest shade. Choose your next lighter shade and scribble around the darker, overlapping. The darker color edges will blend together. Add more shading where you want it. Then add your lighter color, blending the edges again. Now with all this blending, you might want a little darker darks. Go back and put in more color if you wish. Then, take a look at what might be hit with a lot of light. Take either a very light shader and stroke it across those areas. It will remove some of the color and create a highlight. You can stroke a scribble a couple times if you want a stronger highlight. Next, color the center. With my light source where it is, I put darker ink on the lower right. Finished coloring the center. Now the leaves I started with yellow grass but wanted little darker so I shaded with pencil strokes. Last, I wanted to put a shadow line around the outer edge to make the image stand out more from the paper. There's not really an actual recipe for coloring glass using these vases. The shapes and colors for glass totally depend on what is around the glass. The window reflection here is imagine a window across the room would have the vertical and horizontal portions reflect and the glass is a darker shade. It's more just a shadow. After the completion of the coloring, I fussy cut this image with the help of scissor. Let's move towards the card background. I had to make the background in such a way as to put some texture paper on the wall. So I blended background with broken china distressed oxide ink using ink on three wavy stencils. I started blending keeping the wavy stencils in upward position. After a little ink blending I noticed that is the suits for my light flowers. So I want a dark background. Then I again started couple of layers of ink blending to make it little darker. So, this flower is my biggest inspiration. Do you like daisies? My best interactive part starts from here. Can you guess? Yes. It's a window surprise card. You can use square, oval or circle shaped dice to make a window card. 
Like I used circle nesting dies. You have to check if this circle die is perfect for this floral bouquet. I affixed the flower bouquet with square foam tape. And later I stuck the ink blended panel on the base. Here I am going to tell you a trick. You have to paste the window seal panel to the base before cutting the circle window die. If you cut your first window die, then your seal may be slightly disturbed. So first you have to check the focal image where to put the circle die. In this way I cut the window using circle die and later on I paste the image on the base of cardstock. Then I cut the extra paper with scissors. After this, it's time to add sentiment. The size of my sentiment was increased a bit, but it is fine. Which place should be preferred for sentiment? I found this sentiment right at this place, a little below window cut. When the card is closed you can see a bit of the flower image through a circle die cut window. When you open the card, there is a flower bouquet surprise. I can't get over how cute that bouquet is. Finally I added sequins to give this clean and simple card little shine. Don't you think that daisies are a cheerful flower? They always make me smile. So are you getting inspired? Well, make sure you check out what all of my fellow Bloom Brigade team mates have created for you.